Today I'm going to show you how I made all these fun backgrounds for my art journal mixed media pages with all different kinds of stuff. Okay, so today what I want to do is I want to go through my art journal and we're going to make backgrounds. So any page that doesn't have a, a background ready to start a new project on it is going to get a background. Um, this kind of looks like it might be the start of a background, but functionally, this is such a good idea. This is using our um, scrapbook paper to make backgrounds. This is nothing I would ever use. I've got a whole bunch of scrapbook paper. I'm sure we all did. And this is nothing I would ever use for a background, but it can make a very cool background once we start doing um, some work on it. Okay, this one is just a piece of mixed media paper. And I love using the disc bound planner for my um, art journal because I can put pages in and take pages out. All right, let's get this one. This is a piece of um, scrapbook paper that I would never, like, really? What would I do with that with mixed media? Okay, so this is where we're kind of to the part I've done the front and back of this one. I know this one needs a back. So this was on another piece of scrapbook paper. Um, this one has a front and a back, which is the vintage guys. This guy has a front and a back. I love how both sides of this page are very similar in color. This one has a front and a back. Um, I have this that I did at a conference. Um, so maybe I'll leave that for right now and do the back of this one. Um, this one was from a conference. I kind of love this. I'm going to work on that one. But let's do this front. And then we have this one that is just already, um, this is like that Swiss dots Um so I'm going to take all of my pages that don't have backgrounds and make them backgrounds so that I can um, start to work on them without having to do that step every single time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go from like a super light plain background to kind of a basic background. So I'm going to put them this way to a you know, really somewhat plain to, this is gonna be jazzy. So these guys back here are gonna be more jazzy. Let's pull out this one. This is also gonna be a white, whiter one, lighter one. Okay, so let's do these in order. And then that one, whoo! Okay, so we're just gonna put this in a pile and we're gonna start putting background stuff onto these pages. Okay, so this very first one, all I'm gonna do is, I'm going to grab a little bit of white tissue paper, and this is just super plain, and I'm gonna crinkle it up a little bit, because I wanna get some lines and some creases. Let me get two pages. Okay, crinkle, crinkle. Okay, so. Now we're gonna grab our matte Mod Podge. We're gonna use two different kinds of Mod Podge today, matte Podge Podge and gloss Mod Podge. I have a video showing the difference of the two. And I have to find a brush that has already been ruined. Oh, that's a pretty good one. All right, this one. So this is what we'll use today. And now I want to, the thing that, that messes me up is when I put down a whole piece of paper or background paper or tissue paper, or whatever, and and then it doesn't feel very cool. It just feels like, oh, she put a piece of tissue paper on there. So for this first one, number one, we're gonna do just little pieces of tissue paper arranged on here. I need lots of Mod Podge for this. Okay, so we're gonna go here. We're gonna kinda smoosh it down. If there's wrinkles and overlap, that's fine. And backgrounds are not supposed to be important, right? They're just a way for you to have a starting point 
for your artwork. So we don't want to spend a million years making a perfect background because it's really just supposed to be in the back and it's where you start your art. So if I wanted a, um, like a plain white image, so I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna get one of these other pieces and I'm just gonna squish that down and it might stick a little bit, but it doesn't matter because I'm making backgrounds on them in a minute, right? Okay, there we go. So we got the squish down and then the very last thing I like to do is go over with a layer of Mod Podge because I don't like when my materials move around, meaning um, I don't, I tend to use permanent ink, I tend to use permanent um, paint. A lot of people like using Distress, which is a water-based, water-reactive uh, material. If you like that, you may want to not put this final coat of Mod Podge on because it will, um, you'll be able to use that reactive ink on the tissue paper too, right? It'll, it'll let you blend colors and things like that, but that's not part of my art. So you decide whether you're going to do this final, uh, final layer or not. But for me, I kind of like, I just did a project, um, about storytelling and I didn't do the last layer of sealing. And when I was doing some paint pens, it kind of made it weird and I didn't like that. So that is if you want just a white background, but with some, with some texture and fun. Okay, our next background is going to be, we're still gonna put a couple pieces of white in here. So we're gonna have, well, we might put those towards the end. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a couple of different things. So I have some old papers, right? So this is an old magazine. This is an old paper. I think I have a couple pieces of this out already. Doo, doo, doo. Um, I have a couple pieces of old song music. So we're gonna throw those in there. We got some of this tissue paper. And this is gonna make us kind of a cool background that has a little bit of interest, but is, is still relatively plain, right? And there we go. See, I don't, I like all my stuff to be in squares. Some people like these. So you may tear this and see this luscious curve and go, oh my gosh, that's the best. Then use that, right? Use your, do stuff with your art that you like. So now I am gonna take zero minutes to think about this. I'm just gonna start, that goes there, and kind of trade them off, right? So I kind of go graph paper, tissue, let's grab a piece of this. Right, and so what happens when you have this kind of mixed up background in the back is it just gives you a place to start your art without a blank canvas. I see a lot of um, videos on YouTube. Now, I don't want these to be in rows. They, I tended to do this first one in rows, but that's not my intention, so that's not a big deal. We'll just put this up a little bit into this row. Um, I see a lot of videos on YouTube about how to break a white page, right? So I understand it is super intimidating when you're sitting there with just a big old white space and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I got to try to put something on there. What am I going to put? Um, how am I going to make a background? So for me, this is the perfect thing to do is I functionally make a whole bunch of just clumpy old backgrounds. And then when I'm ready, I can just start filling them in. In fact, I'll grab you a couple of my other backgrounds that I've worked on. See, that's a colorful background. There's kind of a plain background. There is a more colorful background and ink. So the second step, for me in creating backgrounds would be to add ink to that, but we're not doing that today. We're, you just have to focus on putting these papers down. Maybe we'll do a second video. Let me know in the 
comments below if you want a second video about how to add inks and paints and stuff like that. But today is just slop it on some Mod Podge, slop it on some papers, say one of the things that um, that I see a lot of people do and we're gonna put this to the side here's our other one it's almost dry that's eh, still a little damp okay but the one thing that I see the most people do is they get their self super twisted about um, about using their supplies like they have special supplies or whatever and if you're really limited in money I would rather see you um, you know, spend money on supplies and then buy, you know, these papers are from Michael's 40% off coupon. Um, I get these papers at estate sales. So I probably paid, you know, less than 10 cents for this pad. Look at that, how dirty that is. That's awesome. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of color. All right. So this is just doing gel press backgrounds where you take um, acrylic paint and you do gel press. So I'm gonna find some that are similar in color because this is gonna be a really light one. All right, so we're gonna go through here. Oh, that's lots of white, right? So that'll be good. And I'm not thinking about this very much. I'm not trying to, to do anything. I just wanna make sure I have light colors, maybe yellow. This one may be plain enough. Oh, this one's gonna be plain enough. Oh, good, okay. So this time, we are gonna mix. Again, we don't wanna start with like just a plain background because that will, um, then you're fighting the white the whole time. So we're gonna come, actually I'll probably, those globs are amazing, probably leak through from the back. So I'm gonna put at least a few of these things around. I'm gonna grab buy old magazines from the internet. Um, I never pay more than a dollar a magazine. So you can buy them in what's called a lot. So look up lot vintage magazines. And a lot of times what happens is they've been damaged, like say they've been water damaged or you know, magazine collectors don't want them because they're 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 fancy, and I am more than happy to have them because give me a nice water spot, and I'm in heaven. Okay, so let's just put a couple of these pieces on. Ooh, it's already getting stuck down. Yay! Okay. So, like I said, I don't want to go over those globs too much. That's a good glob. But let's get something maybe up in here. There we go. And look where that paper tore. That's excellent. That's just a little bit of texture up there. And then I do try to put my corners in my corners, right? I don't know. Maybe it's just a, a throwback from, from school. All right. So now let's grab our tissue papers. And I love this one because this is kind of... Um, this is really open, so I'm going to put this piece that's really open on these blobs. All right, because they're going to show through. That paper's going to show through. We're going to get a little bit of, of fun going on here. And when it, when it pulls like that, I know I just don't have enough Mod Podge underneath. Okay, so... What you want to avoid doing is like making bands of the same thing. So we're going to come over here. We're going to take this blob, right? We're going to put this over here. Nice. Okay. And we have yellow. So let's tear this in thirds-ish. But not the same way. So I did a cross and then up and down and up and down. So we're going to take this.
And, and honestly, so the, the tissue paper is a little delicate, right? Um, but I will tell you, if you start buying old books, that paper is thin and old and crinkly. And if you try to do stuff on it, this one is, is from June 1915. And it is in amazing condition. Some of the ones that I have, you uh, like the, the, the music that we used from before is super delicate and it can barely hold <laughs> can barely hold itself together it's not a hardy paper okay so there's another one yeah yes okay so now what are we up to okay we're up to a plain background color okay so this is a little bit darker so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna grab my stack of these things and I'm gonna look for a for colors that are similar to this, right? So, oh, here we go. We have this thing, which was just a piece of um, Tim Holtz stuff that I I don't like this. Like the reason it's in the pile rather than having been used in the the project I was doing right then is because I didn't like how it turned out. I thought it turned out a little bit funky and not cute. And um, it just wasn't right. Like it came out shiny. I didn't want shiny for that project. But what it is good for, and this is Tim Holtz collage paper. It's like a tissue paper that already comes printed. I'll put a link to that, but uh, I like it very much. It's, it's fun to have something to start with, but now I need to find something that's gonna kind of go with that. So let's look through together. Oh, okay. Well, we found it. We're, that one we re rejected last time is going to be this one's star. Okay, so we got that little piece. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, so this one's going to take us two seconds because it's a smaller, smaller paper. We got just a few things we're putting on. Okay. Everything's a little shiny, so this is gonna have to be like a gold, fancy thing. Like I said, I tend to use the corners in the corners. You do not have to use the corner in the corner. And as you can see, I didn't like put it down to the corner or make sure it was the right lineup of it. But you do you. This one's gonna go sideways. Our fish scales are gonna go sideways. That's good. All right, let's put some of this here because we don't want, we're just using two, so we have to be careful. We don't wind it up with a whole bunch of the same thing in the same place. Let's grab a piece of this stuff. Ooh, that looks like it could fill in that big area right there. All right, there we go. Boop, boop, boop. All right, how about this? Can we go this way? Nope, we went that way. So we want something up here. And this may not cover, like this isn't gonna cover the whole background. I still have paint over here. I have part of the green or the whatever color, maybe it may be gray. I have part of the gray sticking out. See, this isn't white, right? So when you're starting with a totally white page, you have to, if you don't do something with it, it, it kind of jumps out at you. When you're starting with a page that is already green, which is why using up your scrapbook paper is such a good idea. Or if you get mail and there's a good heavy piece, sometimes I'll use a heavy piece of mail. Um, okay, so that's get this coming in from the side maybe maybe put a little bit of thing up there but i'm not i'm not as worried about covering every square inch of this as kind of i well i don't know that i would say i was worried but i tried to cover the majority of the white page where with this i don't tend to have to stress about it so much so i have two little pieces left um if you want you can go in and Put a little piece here and there, right? You don't have to. Maybe break up an area that looks like it's too much of the same thing. 
uh, going across pieces, like overlapping them, will kind of tend to, see how this goes from this one to this one? That will tend to make your um, projects feel more cohesive. Use my big words. Okay, so this is, I love this. I really like this background. And now, if you're making backs, because all these are backs for projects already made and kept, right? I don't very often um, not keep my artwork. There's been a couple that I'm like, this is terrible. I'm not going to keep it. Um, but I tend to, to not throw away any of my stuff. But so what would what would be the worst thing that would happen if I went on the back of one of these and um, and I hated it, right? So what would be the worst thing? I would just put another layer of stuff on it, right? So this is my, oh, this is my fun one. This was uh, all low cost um, art supplies and it has a little tuck hiding spot, but I love that. That's a great background. All right, we're at the point where I'm gonna start sticking my stuff all together, right? Cause I just have layers of of uh, wet Mod Podge over there. All right, where's our next one? Okay, so this one has a bit of color, and now we wanna decide what do we wanna do with this? And I'm gonna keep the color in here, so I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna grab this, which has lots of color, this, which I hate. I didn't think that turned out well at all, so might as well use that. I'm not gonna use it in something else, right? So I might as well use it in something that is, do I have another one of those ones I hate? Because I'm gonna cover most of this up when I do a project, right? So if you have bad, I always do my um, gel press on tissue paper. Um, if you have a bad pull, don't throw it out. Put it in your stack of tissue papers to use for your um, backgrounds, I mean, who cares if it's ugly? We're just gonna cover it up with something else later. And you used all those art supplies, right? You used up your art supplies on it, so you might as well get something out of it. So let's see how much that is not gonna be enough. All right, let's take half of this, and we'll take the less blue half. Okay, here we go. I think that's Dina Wakely. Um, if I had to guess, I would guess that that is Dina Wakely spray because it's crunchy, because it feels a little crunchy. All right, so I'm gonna make a bottom all the way across here. And I'm, I am using that because I'm trying to knock down the, the shininess of my frog paper. It has a gloss. Okay, so we got that. Um, let's do, do we have a top corner? There, we have a top corner with this ugly stuff. Right, so now, now that I'm using this, uh, scrapbook paper it already has a, a, a like a pattern and stuff like that so I don't have to be as concerned about putting down my first you know layer and I don't want a word in the background of my mixed media so I'm going to use something thicker um, but because it has a pattern already I don't have to put down go through all the trouble of putting down that layer of old paper or anything like that, I can just start. And the, the scrapbook papers range from really hardy, um, good paper to just total crap. So um, if, it's, if, if it's just a bad piece of scrap, like if it's a low quality piece of scrapbook paper, this is a really high quality piece of scrapbook paper. And then I have a whole nother side covering, you know, covered in, mixed media products. So this is a really sturdy piece of paper. But if you find that your scrapbook paper is not, um, is not hardy enough, by adding some of these layers, you're gonna be making it thicker paper, right? That's one of the benefits. I think that's upside down, which is fine. See, looks different when it's upside down. Do we do it all upside down? Oh yeah, okay, wow. That's kind of exciting. So remember, look at the front and the back. There we go. What did we do there? So we did a couple things. We covered up a little bit of that thing I hate. We um, merged these two together so that they look better together. 
We're going to do this. Come down here by this horrid green sparkly stuff. We're going to stick this right in here. Right? And this is still a pretty light um, background. There are, are little pops of color here and there, but this is, like, I wouldn't consider this a dark background. My dark, we're going to do a dark background. You will see a dark background. You want to see a dark background? I will make you a dark background. Okay, so here we go. All right, let's get, all right, we have a little piece of this old one. See, when you're doing all your, your um, backgrounds at once, you'll have, you'll get to use up all the little pieces of stuff. And for that one, I kind of want just the, uh, the texture of it. I don't want a huge piece of gold in the middle of it, but that way I got a little bit of the texture. Um, okay, I really, really don't like this, but it's made a good little spot to put this guy, right? Now it's really losing its cohesiveness. All right, let's put this on here. Again, this is one of those ones where, do we want the back? Oh, we want the back, sorry. Um, this is one of those ones where we don't have to be as stressed out about covering every square inch because it already has its own background. Now, let's cover up this blob of blue that I don't like. There we go, gone, not a bother. Now it'll show through a little bit, which is fine. Okay. Shiny frog pieces. Pick. Okay, 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 okay. We have one more piece that can go right in there, right in, oh, we'll make a diamond. And that will kind of serve as the, that might be where I put a focal point, right? Okay, wonderful. All right, do we have that down? Now we do have a little bit more of this. I feel like to make myself happy, I want to, and this is gonna cover that part, but come down here. good do we want I want something I want two things coming in off the edge so I want this little piece that's obviously an edge right to sit just above the edge and hook that bottom piece to this piece and then I want this piece to feel like it's coming in off the edge and I do that by making it come in off the edge <laughs> All right, that's another one. Yeah, yes. And if you're thinking to yourself, does she have a whole pile of wet paper over there? I do. All right. So now this one, I had kind of seen this kind of fancy color. So look at this. We're going to use, not that one. So this one won't work. But we're going to get stuff that is kind of this zingy, um, Here's some, right? So we got that, we got this. This is more rainbow, not zingy. That's kind of, I don't know. Okay, this is a horrible thing I hate. Perfect for this project. Um, okay, what do we got, what do we got? Turn over a whole bunch. See, this is a different color than that. I want the, the bright pink, whatever. Oh, here's some bright pink. Whatever I did that day with bright pink is what I'm looking for. Oh, there's some more. That has to be Dana Wakely inks. Okay, we got a whole bunch of them. We got a whole little cabal of them in the middle. Okay, so we got enough. We got these guys. That guy won't work, but this guy will work, right? Okay, so let's look at these. That is kind of cool and neutral. I'm gonna keep that off to the side. This is super annoying. We're going to use that so we can put it in the back. These circles are amaze balls. We're going to use those. This feels a little too yellow. This feels good. We'll use this as a neutral background. We'll use this and we'll keep this on deck because I don't know what the heck that is. 
Okay, so we're gonna start with the one we heat the most, right? So this is kind of gonna, this is gonna be a darker one. I told you we're gonna do a darker one. This is gonna start to get a darker background, but it's similar in color and tone to that green that we have there already, right? Okay, so let's just put these down and they are gonna be the base for whatever we do, right? We're gonna cover them up, we're gonna move things around near them, we're gonna do all kinds of stuff, but they're gonna be kind of the gang that manages things. And I like using dark backgrounds because I use a lot of um, black and white and white in my writing. And so what makes artwork is when you have contrast, not necessarily when you have uh, different colors or, or whatever. It doesn't, that doesn't matter as much as if you're, see how that white jumps off that dark color? If you had the light pink, you're not gonna see as much of that white because there's no contrast. Okay, oh, we got this little piece of this. Let's put that. This to me feels like, oh, we're gonna use all our loser colors and at the end you're gonna go, Oh my gosh, that looks really, really nice. Okay, let's see. Boop, boop, boop. That's why I said, don't don't throw away any of your poles. You, well, that, I would say there's a few poles I throw away that are just terrible. So you can throw away some of your poles if they're just ugly. But this isn't my style, but it's a nice color combination. It's green and white and and there's nothing wrong with it. And so it wouldn't have made sense to throw that away when I can use it in the background later on. Okay, let's see, let's get this. And then you want your colors to move around. So we want to get a little bit of this pink all over the place, right? So we wanna get a little bit of it over here. We wanna get a little bit of it over there. That way it doesn't feel like it doesn't belong. Put a little bit of it up here. And then one more little bit down here and we will move on to our next piece. Right, so now we're hooking these together by hooking them together. Here we go, all right. Cover up this, not cover it up, but get rid of a little bit of it. Okay, that's good. We still got some of that green pink get out. Okay, we got this piece, so let's do this. Can we merge kind of some of this bottom part with this one? Okay, there we go. And let's do a piece of this here. This is kind of gorgeous. Okay, and then, last but not least, let's do that. So, okay, so we accidentally made a little grouping of this coming down, right? So this is coming down here, and now we have our three circles, which is gonna be super fun to use. Okay, so we're gonna kinda go around here. And this is a gel plate that is a circle. How fun is that? Okay, so we're gonna take this up here. We're gonna put a circle here. And then we're gonna come over here. circle 
Oh, I think I'm going to put a circle right there. Ooh, look at that circle. And then for sure, I have to come down here and put a circle. And if I was doing like this as a design, I would have one going off because that would be, you know, having three full circles would be a thing. But this is a background, right? So here we go. We're going to cover this. And this is going to be a super fun. I, I think I know what I'm going to do on this background. I have a really cool um, like dancing lady who's black and white. And I think that that would go great with this, but we will keep that in mind. And last but not least, let's do this one. Cause this is already like textury and cool, right? And this is, let's see, can we pull any of this stuff off? Cause this was just little bits and pieces from, oh, it might all come off. I was doing this sitting in a, there we go. I was doing this sitting in a ballroom at a conference. And I don't have a plan for that, and that's fine. Okay, that's stuck, I like that. Okay, so now, and we have this black thing that is stuck down. Oh, we got most of it off, that's fine. All right, so we already have tons of colors. So let's go back to our thing. Do we wanna add more? So, so you can do a couple things with tons of colors. You could add more colors. I think we might add more colors. We're gonna add more colors. And then this will wind up being a super, super colorful background that we can use. Uh, let's go with those colors. Kind of want bright. Oh, we have that little bit of black. Let's add black because I hardly ever know where to put that. Okay, let's sorting. I'm sorting. I'll show you what I'm sorting through. There's some more black. That's Halloween black. Okay, okay. That's kind of what we were using before. There's some more Halloween. You can kind of dig through my papers and see what I was working on at different times. What about, okay, we're going to do, oh, I really love that background. I'll, I'm going to do a, um, a video soon to show you how to use all kinds of tools to make um, those kind of backgrounds, because those tend to be my favorites. Do we have anything else we want to use? I think I'm out of, I'm out of rainbow stuff. That's kind of, oh, what's this? What's this? Is that a rainbow piece? Nope, that's that same cool background. I really love that. Is it volunteering? No, it's going to volunteer to actually be in it. Okay, so now we have this, so let's take a little bit of this black which is not super black, right? It's more like black and pink and it's blackish. Okay, so let's stick that down over here. Let's, uh, let's get a little bit of it down here. We have some little buildings down there. Not hurting me. do this and this and then we have little pieces of black all over and let's really stick this black on right piece of black over here it's a lot of mod budge for one little piece of black okay that is going to be really stuck down it's okay all right so we have this now let's go remember you start at the bottom and you work to the top so this is the next weirdest one okay so we got a side so we're going to put this on the side right so I don't I I love that I don't have to worry about doing a total cover or even thinking too much about this because I already have this pattern in the back but I don't want to be fighting the pattern in the back when I'm and I'm trying to miss my from it
I think this is going to be too much. We're not going to use that. We're just going to use up our fun. Because I don't want to cover up all that bottom texture, right? This color and texture underneath is already super fun because it's scrapbook paper. And this will kind of melt into it. You won't be able to see, you'll be able to see underneath stuff, but the white of the tissue paper will tone it down a little bit, kind of almost leaving the, um, the pattern, but not necessarily so much of the colors. Okay, let's do this down here. And this tissue paper is cheap. You can use tissue paper, you can use, I use a gel press, you could use stamps, you could use um, cut out uh, shapes and make a stencil. You do not have to use a gel press. I just find the gel press super fun. Even my son finds it fun and he's a 13 year old boy who finds nothing fun. So you know if a 13 year old boy doesn't mind doing it, it's fun. Look, there's a hole in that one. Okay. And I could have, I've done lots of things with rainbows where I start at the top and I make sure that the rainbow's in order, but this is not that. This is just having some of these fun rainbow colors um, that kind of go with the background, but don't especially go with the back. I'm going to have to dig that out. And I think this turned out fun. This is one I will enjoy using because it has a bunch of different color combinations. It has that under tone of black, but we've kind of muted that with a lot of these white pieces. Yeah, I kind of think this is fun. It's a good background. It's a good pattern background, right? So if we want something, if I want to grab something, that has a little bit of a uh, zhezhing or va va voom to start with, this would be a good one. Oh, you know what? Let's do one more and let's use the Gloss Mod Podge because I told you I would show you how, what it looks like different. Okay. All right, so this is a good one. All right, so I really like this and I am going to use book pages. I'm going to grab this old, do I need two? Let's see. This old music sheets. How tedious and tasteless. It's a, uh, these are hymns. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to do something fun and I'm going to grab some Tim Holtz that collage paper we used before, but this hasn't been, this hasn't been colored. This is just gonna, and you buy it in big rolls. You buy it in big rolls or little rolls. This was a big roll. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna use this stripey background. And this is gonna be fun. But we're going to use the gloss. Now, you may wonder, do you have to change your brush? So many times I'll change my brush, especially if I'm working on finishing layers. But the formula for both Mod Podge and um, Gloss Mod Podge are the same. They're just, one has gloss in it. I find, for me, the gloss is thicker. The gloss, um, the gloss consistency is thicker. I think I dabbed in too much. All right, let's get this on. And then at the end, when I show you the ones, you'll see that this is really, how tedious. Uh, this is really glossy, which is good. This will give us a fun, and I'm not gonna cover all of this wonderful stripiness, right, with uh, with these papers, but I need a little bit here and there. Like this is, this is what you want to realize is if I have a striped background, that I'm fighting a striped background. But if I have a background that has a little bit of stuff in it, then all of a sudden, it's just a background. You know, you're not, you're not trying to fight. 
the property of your background. Okay. We're kneeling. See? Hymns. It's not a hymn book. Don't get twisted. It's just a little book of music. I like that God's hanging out with me. Get a little bit here and there. It's gonna be glossy. We got this one last little piece. We're gonna make these look like they're hooked together by hooking them together. Nope, that side. There we go. All right. And I will say that I feel like the gloss is easier to manage. Um, okay, we're gonna go down an edge with this because it's a weird edge, but it smells funny. I don't like the way it smells. Kind of creeps me out. Okay, this is too big a piece. It could be tall or it could be wide or it could be skinny, but it can't be tall and wide and fat. I want to be able to see through little pieces of stuff. See, you can see the stripes through that. And Tim Holtz's stuff, as opposed to the super cheap, imagine that you pay a little bit more, it, uh, it disintegrates better than $27 for a ream of uh, tissue paper. But if I paid for, I use so much tissue paper. If I used, paid for Tim Holtz collage paper, I would go, I would, I would run out of money for my crafting super fast. So that's the thing, you know, pay, pay up for what, what works the best for you. I love buying craft supplies, don't get me wrong, but I also want to make sure that I can afford to try new stuff and that I'm never like, oh my God, I can't use it because it costs too much. Um, look at how cool this is turning out. I am thrilled. That's the cat. So everybody asks about the cat. The cat howls like she's dying. And at first, because she's an old old deer, at first I thought, and my son looked it up, and he said it was um, that she's in pain. And so we were all freaked out. And then we realized it's just she got old and realized if she screams at us that, um, that we will tell her to come visit us. And she likes that. So I intend when I get very old to just start screaming at people. All right, there we go. Look how cool that is. All right, and we're gonna gloss this whole thing, and you'll see it is it'll it'll be very glossy. Um, it's exactly the, and it's so weird because it's exactly the same finish. Um, it's exactly like you can paint on it, you can dye on it, you can use all kinds of stuff. It's just one is um, matte, and one is glossy. So. I'm super excited. Thanks for crafting with me because this could have been a little bit boring if I was doing it by myself, but now we're just hanging out doing our backgrounds, right? All right, there we go. Easy peasy. All right, so I'll be back and show you the end results when they're all dry and unstuck from each other. Okay, so let's see what they turned out like. This is the, the one with just tissue paper. This is tissue paper, old book pages, things like that. Then we've got, this one is the one on the gray background. I think that turned out really cool. This one is a nice one. It's super light, very cool. This one I like a lot, but that's, I think, because I like yellow so much. So that's neat. Now we're getting to the colorful ones. This is snazzy. That's on the, uh, the scrapbook paper. This may be my favorite one. That's on the yellow lined paper. And then this one is just nothing but color. So I feel like those turned out super, super well. I love all the backgrounds and hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life.